വെൽക്കം ടു റൈജസ് വ്ളോഗ് പ്ലീസ് സബ്സ്ക്രൈബ് ആൻഡ് സപ്പോർട്ട് മൈ ചാനൽ അവർ ന്യൂ സ്റ്റോറി ഹിസ് ഫേസ്റ്റ് ഫ്ലൈറ്റ് ബൈ ലിയാം ഒ ഫ്ലഹാറ്റി ഹിസ് ഫേസ്റ്റ് ഫ്ലൈറ്റ് ബൈ ലിയാം ഒ ഫ്ലഹാറ്റി ലിയാം ഒ ഫ്ലഹാറ്റി വാസ് എൻ ഐറിഷ് നോവലിസ്റ്റ് ആൻഡ് ഷോർട്ട് സ്റ്റോറി റൈറ്റർ and his works are noted for their psychological insight into life's problem and the ways of recovering them his first flight it's a story of a young seagull that was afraid to make its first flight its parents goaded him into action and thereby helped him to face the challenges of life and his first flight relates the importance of independence and self confidence let's have a glimpse of the story his first flight the young seagull was alone on his ledge his two brothers and his sister had already flown away the day before he had been afraid to fly with him somehow when he had taken a little run toward the brink of the ledge and attempted to flap his wings he became afraid so his first flight is a story of a young seagull and who was standing alone on the ledge why he was standing alone on the ledge because he was afraid to fly his two brothers and sister had already flown the day before but he was afraid to fly with him he thinks that his wings would not support him the great expanse of the sea stretched down beneath when he is looking down from the ledge he saw the great expanse of the sea it is stretching down beneath and this view also made him sad and he felt that his wings would never support him so he felt his head Oh he bent his head and ran back to the little hole under the ledge where he slept at night Even when each of his brothers and little sister whose wings were far shorter than his own ran to the brink flapped their wings and flew away he failed to muster up courage to take that plunge which appeared to him so desperate but his two brothers and his little sister their wings their wings were shorter than the young seagull but they ran to the brink they flapped their wings and they flew away the previous day and his father and mother had come around calling to him shrilly scolding him threatening him to let him stay on his ledge unless he flew away but for the life of him he could not move from the ledge the young seagull was very lazy his father his brother had scolded him threatened him and let him stay on the ledge but the young seagull he couldn't move from the ledge that was 24 hours ago since then nobody had come near him the day before all the long day he had watched his parents flying about his brothers and sister perfecting them in the art of flight teach them how to skim the waves and how to dive for the fish he had in fact seen his older brother catch his first herring and devour it standing on a rock while his parents circled round praising a proud cackle so these all things would happen 24 hours ago since then nobody had come near to the young seagull he was standing alone on the ledge the day before all day long he had watched his parents flying so what is doing from the ledge he is watching what his parents were doing 
The day before, all the long day, he had watched his parents flying about his brothers and sister, perfecting them in the art of flight, teaching them how to skim the waves and how to dive for the fish. So the parents is teaching his siblings how to skim the waves and how to dive for the fish and the art of the flight very beautifully. But the young seeker, he was alone on the ledge without knowing what to do. He had in fact seen his older brother catch his first herring and devour it. He's watching these all things. When his older brother catches first a herring, herring means small fish. He saw the older brother catches first herring and devour it. Devour means swallow. Standing on the rock, while he was standing on the rock, he saw all these things. His brother catch the first herring and devour it. While his parents circled around, praising a proud crackle. His parents became so happy when his brother first caught the herring and devoured it. So the parents are making a proud cackle. Cackle means the sound made by the words. And all the morning, the whole family had walked about on the big plateau midway down to the opposite cliff, laughing at his cowardice. So his parents were laughing at his cowardice because he is behaving like a coward by standing alone on the ledge. He's not accompanying his parents or his siblings. He is like a coward. The sun was now ascending the sky, blazing warmly on his ledge that faced the south. He felt the heat because he had not eaten since the previous nightfall. Then he had found a dried piece of mackerel's tail at the far end of his ledge. The sun was now ascending the sky, blazing warmly on his ledge that faced the south. It mentions that now it is getting afternoon. He felt the heat because he had not eaten since the previous nightfall. Then he had found a dyed piece of a mackerel tail at the far end of his ledge. When he searched along the ledge, he found a dried piece of a mackerel tail at the far end of his ledge. Now there was not a single scrap of food left there. He had searched every inch, rooting among the rough, dirt cake to straw nest where he and his brothers and his sister had been hatched. Now, there was not a single scrap of food left there. He had searched every inch. Among the dirt cake to straw nest, where he and his brothers and sister had been hatched. He even gnawed, he swallowed the dried piece of eggshell. He couldn't find a trace of any food there. At last what he eat, he gnawed the dried piece of his own eggshell. It was like eating a part of himself. Poor little seeker. He became so hungry. Without having no food left on the ledge, he ate his own dried pieces of eggshell. What a fate. He then trotted back and forth from one end of the ledge to the other. His long grey legs stepping daintily trying to find some means of reaching his parents without having to fly. But on each side of him the ledge ended in a sheer fall of precipice. With the sea beneath, and between him and his parents, there was a wide, deep crack. He then trotted back and forth. Trotted means move by jumping. Okay. He then 
trotted back and forth from one end of the ledge to the other he is moving from the one end of the ledge to the other he is moving back and forth from the ledge his long gray legs stepping daintily he became too si- tired so he is stepping his legs very carefully trying to find some means of reaching his parents without having to fly he is very lazy really he is very lazy he want to reach his parents without having with your having to fly he want to reach his parents without having to fly but on each side of him the ledge ended in sheer fall of precipice a rock sheer fall of precipice means steep rock with the sea beneath when he is looking down yes the sea is beneath him and between him and his parents there was a deep wide crack you can see from the picture yes look at the picture you can see the picture he is standing alone on the ledge while his parents were flying the but he is not attempting to fly he want to reach his parents without having to fly okay surely he could reach them without flying if he could move only northwards along the cliff face but then on what could he walk there was no ledge and he was not a fly and about him he could see nothing the precipice the steep rock was sheer and the top of it was perhaps farther away than the sea beneath him there was no ledge and he was not a fly and above him he could see nothing the precipice was sheer and the top of it was perhaps farther away than the sea beneath him so he stepped slowly out to the brink of the ledge and standing on one leg with the other with the other leg hidden under his wing he closed one eye then the other and pretended to be falling asleep the clever lazy seeker what is he doing he stepped slowly out to the brink of the ledge he is stepping he is walking very very slowly to the brink of the ledge and standing on one leg with the other leg hidden under his wing he is standing on one leg and he hide his other leg with his wing and he close to one eye then the other he is looking he is looking at his mother and his siblings and he pretend intent to be falling asleep he is pretending that he is falling asleep what a clever seeker still they took no notice of him he saw his two brothers and his sister lying on the plateau dozing with their heads sunk into their necks the young seeker is watching his siblings what are they doing there they were lying on the plateau they were taking rest there they were dozing with their heads sunk into their necks his parents and his siblings they were taking rest his father was preening his feathers preening his feathers means is cleaning his feathers with his beak okay his parents or his fa- sorry his father was preening the feathers on his white back only his mother was looking at him only his mother was looking at him she was standing on a little high hump on the plateau her white breast thrust forward now and again she tore a piece of a fish that lay at her feet and then scraped each side of his beak on the rock the sight of the food maddened him how he loved to tear food that way scraping his beak now and again to wet it 
He uttered a low cackle. His mother cackled too and looked at him. She was standing on a little high hump on the plateau. She means young seagull's mother. Young seagull's mother was on a little high hump plateau. Hump on the plateau. Okay. Young seagull's mother was standing on a plateau there. While her white breast thrust forward. They are resting there. Now and again she tore a piece of fish at that lay at her feet. So what is the mother doing? Yes, the mother is tearing a piece of fish that lay at her feet and then scrapped each side of her beak on the rock. Oh, the sight of the food really maddened the young seagull. He also liked to tear for that way, scrapping his beak now and again and to wet it. What means? To sharpen. He uttered a low cackle. He made a low cackling sound and his mother cackled too and looked at him. Gaga, he cried, begging her to bring him over some food. Gao, she screamed back mockingly. But he kept calling plaintively and after a minute or so, he uttered a joyful scream. His mother had picked up a piece of fish that was lying, that was flying across to him with it. Gaga ga, he cried, begging her to bring over some food. The young seagull cried, ga ga ga, begging her mother, okay, begging his mother to bring over some food to him. Gao, she screamed. She screamed means the mother screamed back. Mockingly, she's screaming back. But the young seagull, he kept calling plaintively. And after a minute or so, he uttered a joyful scream. His mother had picked a piece of fish and was flying across to him with it. He leaned out, leaned he leaned out eagerly, tapping the rock with his feet. He became very happy while his mother bring back a piece of fish on her beak. And he tried to get nearer to her mother as she flew across to him. But what did the mother do? But when the mother was just opposite to him, abreast of the lid, she halted. She stopped the her legs hanging limb. Her mother, her legs means mother's legs hanging limb. Her wings motionless. The piece of the fish in her beak almost within the reach of the beak. Why the mother brings a piece of fish for the young seagull. But while she reached near to the young seagull, she halted there. She placed her hanging limbs very silently. Her wings were motionless and the piece of the fish in her beak almost within the reach of the beak to the young seagull. He waited a moment in surprise, wondering why she did not come near and then maddened by hunger, he dived at the fish. With a loud scream, he felt outwards and downwards into the space. His mother had swooped upwards. As he passed beneath her, he heard the swish of her wings. He waited a moment in surprise, wondering why she did not come nearer. The young seagull was waiting for the mother. And why? He is wondering why the mother did not come to me. And then, maddened by hunger, at last, by maddened by hunger, the young seagull, he dived at the fish. With a loud scream, he felt outwards and downwards into the space. His mother had swooped upwards. When? 
the young sea gull dived at the fish what the mother do yes the mother swooped upwards as the young sea gull passed beneath his mother and he heard the swish of mother's wings what a beautiful moment then a monstrous terror seized him and his heart stood still he could hear nothing but it only lasted a moment the next moment he felt his wings spread outwards the wind rushed against his breast feathers then under his stomach and against his wings he could feel the tips of his wings cutting through the air then a monstrous terror seized him and his heart stood still he could hear nothing he became little frightened and he couldn't hear anything but it only lasted a moment the next moment he felt his wings spread outwards he really enjoyed the art of flight now the wind rushed against his breast feathers and then his stomach and his wings and he could feel the tips of his wings cutting through the air he was not falling he long now he was soaring gradually he was flying above gradually downwards and upwards and outward he was no longer afraid now he felt just a bit dizzy then he flapped his wings once and he soared upwards he flapped his wings once again and he soared upwards he uttered a joyous scream and then flapped them again the young seagull was very happy so he uttered a joyful scream and he flapped his wings again and again he soared higher he fly higher and higher he raised his breast and banged against the wind ga 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 his mother swooped past him her wings making a loud noise he answered her with another scream then his father flew over him screaming then he saw his two brothers and sister flying around him soaring and diving he became very happy he answered her mother with another scream his father and his siblings they all followed the young sea girl and they all together were flying and diving soaring above and above then he completely forgot that he had not always been able to fly and commenced to dive and soar and shrieking shrilly so the young seagull completely forgot that he had not always been able to fly commenced to dive and soar he shrieking shrilly he was near the sea now flying straight over it now the young seagull was flying over the sea straight over it facing out over the ocean he saw a vast green sea beneath him with the little ridges moving over it he really enjoyed the art of flight now he turned his beak sideways and crowed amusedly his parents and his brothers and sister had landed on the green floor in front of him so what his parents do he saw a vast sea beneath him and he turned his side big sideways and he crowed amusedly 
and his parents and his brothers and sister they all grounded on the green floor in front of him so he saw his parents and his siblings they were on the sea they landed on the sea on the green floor in front of him they were beckoning they were calling they were calling the young seagull they were calling shrilly they were calling shrilly the young seagull he dropped his legs to stand on the green sea his legs sank into it he screamed with a fright and attempt to rise again what the young seagull do he dropped his legs to stand on the sea when he placed his feet on the sea what happened on the see what happened his legs sank into the water he screamed with a fright and attempted to rise again flapping his wings but he was tired and weak with hunger he could not rise and he was very exhausted by the strange exercise his feet sank into the green sea and then his belly belly means stomach his belly touched it his belly touched the water and he sank no farther and he sank no farther he was floating on it and around him his family was screaming praising him and their beaks were offering him the scraps of dog fish so he was floating on the sea and around him his family was screaming they were scream with joy they were all praising him and their beaks were offering him scraps of dog fish all of them were very happy while the young seagull made his first flight he made his first flight this is our story his first flight so his first flight this beautiful story it relates the importance of independence and self confidence and as well as the need to remain involved in family life through the story of the birds the writer conveys the importance of self esteem and self reliance thank you all thank you